Challenges in Pediatric Cataract Surgery for Beginners Pediatric cataract is an important cause of preventable childhood blindness. It can be congenital, seen within first year of life, developmental, seen after infancy, or traumatic, that is seen after trauma. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment are necessary in order to prevent permanent visual disability due to amblyopia. Management of pediatric cataract should be individualized based on the age of onset, laterality, morphology of cataract, associated ocular and systemic conditions. Evaluation of a child with pediatric cataract begins with a detailed history taking, ophthalmic evaluation and laboratory investigations. Management Non-surgical method is indicated in cases of small partial cataract, non-progressive cataract, peripheral cataract, punctate opacities with intervening clear zones, opacities less than 3 mm in diameter. These cataracts can be observed with amblyopia therapy in the form of patching. Indications for surgery Surgery is indicated in cases of visually significant cataract which involves central 3 mm of visual axis blocking the red reflex, a posterior cataract, confluent cataract with no clear optical zones. Child size is unique because of the following factors low scleral and corneal rigidity, highly elastic anterior and posterior capsule, increased vitreous pressure, decreased axial length, smaller capsular bag, smaller lens diameter, and myopic shift. Accurate measurements of axial length and keratometry may be difficult due to poor cooperation and poor fixation. Aim of the pediatric cataract surgery is to provide and maintain clear visual axis and a focused retinal image. Technique widely followed is lens aspiration with primary posterior capsulorexis, with anterior vitrectomy, with or without intraocular lens implantation. Intraocular lens implantation is usually done in children more than 1 year of age. In children more than 8 years of age, primary posterior capsulorexis is deferred as they cooperate for yak capsulotomy later. However, in pre-existing PC plaque, nystagmus and specially abled children, primary posterior capsulorexis is performed even in older children. Incision and wound construction Two side ports are created using MVR blade. This facilitates capsulorexis and bimanual lens aspiration. Anterior capsulotomy This is performed with either a cystitome or microrexis forceps after injecting trifin blue dye for better visualization. Cohesive viscoelastics help in maintaining the anterior chamber stability during the capsulorexis. Anterior capsule in children is highly elastic, making it a challenge to achieve a continuous, smooth, well-centered capsulorexis. This has a steep learning curve. For proper centration of intraocular lens, Anterior capsulotomy should be smaller than the IOL optic. If the capsule begins to extend to periphery, stop before the edge is out of sight under the iris, re-grasp the edge and pull directly toward the center of the pupil to recover the tear. Spiral technique can be tried for a more controlled capsulorexis whenever there is risk of peripheral runoff. If the capsulotomy is not adequate, it can be extended by giving a tangential extension using micro scissors. Lens aspiration Meticulous removal of lens substance is a crucial step. Even a single strand or fiber left behind can cause proliferation of mitotic cells leading to visual axis opacification. This is done using bimanual irrigation aspiration technique. Keratome is used to create clear corneal incision. Superior incision is commonly performed in view of less risk of injury and post-operative endophthalmitis. Intraocular lens implantation Single-piece hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lenses are preferred. Intraocular lens is most commonly placed in the back. Dialing of intraocular lens is difficult in children. When capsular fixation is not possible, Intraocular lens can be placed in the sulcus. 
posterior capsule management if posterior capsule is left intact there are more chances of developing significant posterior capsular opacification opening of primary posterior capsular axis should be smaller than the anterior capsulotomy but large enough to leave a clear visual axis anterior vitrectomy the anterior vitreous phase acts as a scaffold for the proliferation of lens epithelial cells and hence primary posterior capsular axis is combined with anterior vitrectomy endolite provides better visualization during primary posterior capsular axis and anterior vitrectomy all wounds must be sutured preferably using absorbable sutures not suturing of the wound will lead to fish mouthing due to low scleral rigidity take home message pediatric cataract management is challenging even to an experienced surgeon taking special considerations into account will help to simplify the surgery and to prevent complications techniques and decision of intraocular lens implantation should be tailored according to the patient surgery is only the beginning of a lifelong treatment of a child with cataract management of amblyopia and strict follow up are extremely important thank you